Ah, creating a picture. So the sort of pictures are that we uh, would be good to get onto Classpad are the ones that we'd use in applications like PicturePlot, where we can uh, use tools to model um, sort of naturally occurring objects such as this. Well, not naturally occurring, but it's a man-made pylon here. Also, we can set backgrounds in graph and table. There it is. You can see it's showing up in graph and table too, where we can model it. So how do we make these pictures if we want to use some of our own rather than uh, the ones that come? If well, Let's just have a look in system here. Um, in the picture folder, you'll see these are the ones that come as standard on um, most class pads. If not, you can download them from edu.casio.com. So how do we make them? Well, let's tidy up things and get rid of um, this so we can see our desktop. First thing is you need to download a copy of um, the Casio Picture Conversion Engine for ClassPad 2. You'll need to contact uh, the dealer in the country you're in to um, get hold of this. It's not freely accessible off the Casio website. And you'll also need a couple of pictures. So here, what have I got here? A picture of my local train station um, and also a, a picture of um, let's have a look at the next one here it is a, a, a local entertainment center so it's got some nice straight lines that my students might like to uh, try modeling so how do we convert those into format that uh, is ready for class pad well here we go so I'll close those down and start up the software and um, here it is there's no image there now it's as easy as this the first thing is to simply drag the image on and uh, you get the option do you want to auto convert i'll say no but if you're feeling um, lucky you could probably just tap yes and um, get it so restore last editing session no thanks let's just carry on now by default it's kind of trying to fit it to the screen um, and I found the best size for these pictures is 310 pixels uh, wide by 401 tall. Uh, that's going to then you won't lose any of your image. They'll fit this cropping screen perfectly. Um, supposing at the moment we're set up to f sort of to match the width. If I choose to match the height instead, you can see I can now drag the picture around a bit and um, Maybe I'll stay up the top there. Let's tap on that one again, but just move it over a bit so that I kind of get maybe uh, the curve of these sort of roof struts here and a couple of straight lines. So um, there are other tools, zoom in and zoom out. Over here, we can rotate the picture left and right. We can tilt it slightly. Uh, we can reflect it uh, horizontally and vertically. We can also um, go half screen, which we'll try that out on the next picture we do. And we can also change the scale. If I put the axis on and drag this little tool out the way, when this picture shows up in ClassPad, this is where the X and Y axis will be. So if you wanted to use that to um, move the uh, object around in the background a little bit to line up things maybe to make it easier or harder you can also change the scale on the x and y axis rather than at the moment they're in units ones we could change to tenths or tens and so on there uh, so um we're kind of happy with that so i'm going to just tap off and um tap the button to remove that and uh everything's ready let's just tap on convert and ClassPad says, right, the image is um, being converted and it's going to be left in the same location as the original image file. So we say OK to that. And on my desktop, it's just over here. Let me drag it. Here it is. Um, I'll pop it there next to um, Subi Station. Uh, but of course, it's not a very common file type. So my operating system can't display it as anything other than um, a C2P file. Let's try Perth Arena. So let's drag that over to here. Auto convert, no. On this one, uh, I'm going to toggle this half screen button. So rather than have it full screen, I'm going to just have this as a half screen type of graph. And um, it's not quite, fun. I'm going to fit it to the height. So I lose a little bit of the edges there. And I'm pretty happy with that. So I'll tap convert on that as well and say OK. And here it is, it's on my desktop. I'll just drag it back over. So we've got our images converted. Now we need to get them onto ClassPad. There's another video that explains how to do that. So um, uh, I won't go into that here. Uh, we're finished with the software, I'll say okay. Now, 
I'm just going to take these two and put them onto my emulator and here we go I'll grab my emulator back and let's get some background where's my emulator gone here it is so the sizing 310 by 401 pixels now if I I've just come back into my system remember into the system app here and view storage and import and select and here they are so here's the um, Perth and here's Subi station so that's good let's see what they look like uh, I'll do one of them in picture plot and uh, Subi station I think so file open and I tap up to the root directory which is where I've just copied it um, Subi station open are you sure yep and here it is you can see the image that I just created now I can start trying to model it um, you know tap on graph graph editor put in a possible function and so on there's another video that explains how to use picture plot uh, to do that kind of thing um, menu let's go into graph and table instead of having this one let's get the Perth arena so I'll hit the little diamond up here and uh, oh I'm in the wrong window I need to tap the bottom window first then tap on the diamond open picture and here it is Perth arena open and ah, that's pretty good I might I can adjust the fading and so on like that again this is explained in a different video on how to um, sort of fine-tune these things but that's basic the basics of creating a picture that you can use on classpad